Auto Owners Insurance, simple human sense. Scattered showers working their way off to our north right now, mainly just for areas south of I-96. Our current temperature is outside at 53 degrees in Lansing and St. John's. 51 for your current temperature down in Jackson. We're right at that 50 degree mark over in downtown Hillsdale. Scattered showers are still set to continue as we go throughout the overnight hours tonight and throughout the day tomorrow as well. That does include time for any trick or treat activities that you may have planned. We'll time it all out for you coming up in just a little bit. 6 News at 11 starts right now. WLNS is here for you with 6 News at 11. Things turned violent after the big MSU versus U of M game last night and now we've just learned that four Spartans have been suspended. It's our top story at 11. Thanks for joining us. I'm Shamir Owens. The rivalry game last night ended with a win for the Wolverines, but what happened after the game is the talk of the town after a brawl in the tunnel. A video from the Detroit News shows a group of Spartans surround and attack a U of M player after the game. Our sports anchor Nick Mantis joins us now with reactions to the incident from both schools. Shamir, we knew that last night's football game between Michigan and Michigan State was going to get aggressive on the field. But after the head coaches shook hands, a Michigan football player was walking back to his locker room when this happened. The video posted by the Detroit News' Matt Charbonneau appears to show several Michigan State football players fighting with one Michigan player. After the scuffle, the teams were sent into the locker rooms, and the MSU and University of Michigan Police Departments have since launched a co-investigation into the situation. Michigan head coach Jim Harbaugh told us the information that he had as he sat down for his post-game press conference. Yeah, two of our players were... Um, uh, Assaulted. I was, uh, you saw this, see, I saw the one video, it's the 10 on one. It's pretty, 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 um, pretty bad. I'm going to let uh, our athletic director, Ward Manuel, uh, address it uh, with the authorities. We just got some breaking news that the Michigan State football team is suspending four players. Tank Brown, Kerry Crump, Angelo Gross, and Zion Young effective immediately. We'll have more details for you on those suspensions coming up in Sports Overtime. Shamir, back to you. The Michigan State Board of Trustees is scheduled to hold a special meeting tomorrow to appoint an interim president. This comes after President Stanley resigned nearly three weeks ago, citing a loss of confidence in the Board of Trustees. Tomorrow's meeting will begin at noon. Be sure to stay with 6 News on air, online, and on our 6 News app as we bring you the latest. One person is in the hospital after they were shot earlier today in East Lansing. Because of the big game, many police cruisers were already in the streets of downtown East Lansing around 2.30 when officers heard gunshots fired from inside a parking ramp on Grove Street. They responded quickly and found the victim with a non-life-threatening gunshot wound. Investigators are working to figure out what exactly happened. 6 News will update you once we learn more about this incident. The officers are still currently investigating the incident. Our detective bureau is also interviewing witnesses reference to this case. And this case is still ongoing. Uh, and we will be working the best we can to, to find out who was involved in this incident. You the latest on that. Trick or treating is officially canceled in one neighborhood in Metro Detroit, all because the area is infested with cockroaches. According to our affiliate WXYZ, officials in Wyandotte say a cockroach infestation has been confirmed at a vacant home following a tip from a trash hauler. Now, the pests have been moving to other homes. Sidewalks on a portion of 20th Street will be closed tomorrow night to prevent further roach migration, according to the city engineer. Officials say they don't want the bugs hitching a ride on costumes or in anyone's buckets since their eggs can still spread and survive. Hey, they're breaking tradition this year, all to keep their kids safe. Six News reporter Elena Cushino is here for you now with why some parents are choosing a different method of trick or treating. Yes, Shamir, some parents told me they prefer going to trunk or treats instead of knocking on doors. Hi, happy Halloween. You want to pick one out? 
Some families are ditching doors this Halloween. Thank you so much. And instead, they are heading to parking lots, like today at Ellison Brewery. Everyone's doing trunk or treats instead of going around to the neighborhoods. Um, you know, again, I think it's a safety thing. You know, you, you kind of don't know who's going to be on the other side of the door. It's a walking around thing, carrying kid things. So it's, you know, it's just easier. For parent Kiana Chappelle, trunk or treats don't replace door to door knocking, but they offer another way for her kids to have fun. I actually think it's a whole lot safer than regular trick or treats. Like, you know, um, we can be in that kind of like controlled environment as opposed to like being on the street, even though. I mean, I like the traditional way as well. But parents are not the only ones <laughs> who enjoy trunk or treating over walking through a neighborhood. I like getting scooters and riding places and getting candy instead of just walking to houses taking forever. It's just boring. So whether you go door to door or decide to trunk or treat this year, kids and parents say overall they are excited for tomorrow. I like dressing up the most. I like to paint my face. Um, I, I think I'm more excited about it than the kids. Uh, it's dark and we dress up and can't forget the candy. Now, this is one of the children that I spoke to, Kyrie, and he wasn't in his costume in this video, but he wants everyone to know that tomorrow he will be dressed as Ghostface. Shamir, back to you. <laughs> Thanks, Elena. Well, Halloween celebrations are already in full effect for much of mid-Michigan, and here in East Lansing, the police department decided to join in on all the holiday fun. Today, the East Lansing Police Department hosted its annual Halloween party in the park. The event took place at the East Lansing Farmers Market. Sector, sector 3 officers gave out candy to kids dressed up in their best co Halloween costumes. People also had a chance to check out ELPD cruisers and meet the department's canine, Scott. Lieutenant Lieutenant Adrian O'Hario says events like these make communities stronger. What it does is it bridges that gap and it lets community members know what police officers are actually serving them. So it's as important to us to reach out to the community as it is for the community to get to know who's serving them and who's engaging. ELPD says they plan to host more community-centered events in the future. Sector 1 officers say they'll be handing out candy in the White Hills area tomorrow night for Halloween. From Storm Tracker 6, this is Weather First, sponsored by Auto Owners Insurance. Simple human sense. It was kind of a gloomy Sunday for us here in mid Michigan. We do still have scattered rain showers moving into the area. These showers are still going to last even as we move throughout the day tomorrow. Pretty good chance that we're going to see some activity just in time for trick or treating as well. But then high pressure system moves in from Tuesday through Thursday. After that, still a slight chance that we may see some activity return later in the day on Friday. Today was still pretty nice, even though we still saw a lot of cloud cover in the area. High temperatures made it up to 61 degrees here at the Capital temperatures right now at 53. Very similar over towards Grand Ledge. Again, just cloud cover right now. We're still awaiting the rain showers in this area. We're at 51 after a high of 61 for today. This morning's low was down to 37 degrees. Over towards downtown Hillsdale right now at 52. Maximum winds for today only gusting up to 9 miles an hour. Our highs didn't even break 60 degrees over in downtown Hillsdale. Over in Jackson, 51 this morning's temperatures were quite chilly, up down to 33 degrees as we started off your Sunday. Nonetheless, highs still made it all the way up to 62 degrees. And finally, off to our north in St. John's. 53 for your current temperature after highs of 62 for today. Satellite and radar shows those scattered showers slowly making the trip off to our north. We still have a lot of activity to get through. Again, these showers are still going to likely last as we go throughout the overnight hours tonight, and they will still be in place as we start the day off on Monday as well. Now, now by Monday afternoon, we could see some dry air finally begin to move into the area, but by no means are we done with the rain showers by then. Still expecting a lot of activity to return by Monday evening. 6.30, we still have a couple of light sprinkles to be expected for any trigger treaters that may want to get out early. These scattered showers are still going to last Monday evening and into Monday night. I should mention, though, 
temperatures still going to be fairly warm by this time. We'll still be in the mid to upper 60s. So for any trick or treaters, maybe just grab a light jacket and think about adding that umbrella to your Halloween costume. After that, everything will be in the clear. I do not think this is going to be a complete washout, just some light sprinkles that we will have to deal with. After Monday, though, low pressure system leaves. High pressure returns to the area. We're looking at mostly sunny conditions as we move throughout your Tuesday and for your Wednesday as well as we are still expected to hang on to these above average high temperatures. For tonight, overnight lows falling down to 49 degrees and light breeze out of the southeast. Tomorrow going to feel very similar temperature wise to what we saw today. Highs of 61, but again, we still have those scattered showers to be expected. Six day forecast shows we do still have some warmer temperatures on the way right back up into the mid to upper 60s by Tuesday through Friday. Again, Friday night, pretty good chance we could see some more showers in the area that will carry over into the early morning hours of the day on Saturday. Day part on Saturday, however, looks like it's going to be in the clear, but by next work week, looks like highs will be in the low 50s. So take advantage of this warm weather that we have right now, even if it means we have kind of a rainy situation for Halloween. Okay. Yeah, I won't complain too much. I'll take yeah. advantage of this. I'll be patient. So that'll, that'll be all good. Yes. All right. Thanks, Kendall. Well, coming up, we'll have more on how many in South Korea are honoring the lives lost during a stampede over the weekend as the death toll continues to rise. So stay tuned. 6 News at 11. We'll be right back. Get the latest mid-Michigan political story straight to your inbox with the Capital Rundown Wrap-Up. Sign up at WLNS.com slash newsletter today. Today's Storm Tracker 6 forecast is sponsored by the Reed Insurance Agency and DeWitt, your local independent auto owner's insurance agent. Join Sparrow Hospital Guild for TGIF at the Country Club of Lansing on November 4th. Enjoy an evening of tailgate festivities and fun to benefit Sparrow Hospice. Register today at sparrow.org slash TGIF. When you're hurt in an auto accident, don't let the insurance company treat you like junk. We'll fight the insurance company and make them pay every penny you deserve. 1-800-CALL-SAM. Attacking Alyssa Slotkin with video taken out of context is deceitful and wrong. She's dedicated her life to keeping America safe. I served alongside Alyssa in the White House under both Republican and Democratic presidents, and she always spoke truth to power doing what's right for country, not party. We need more of that in Congress. I'm Alyssa Slotkin, and I'm proud to approve this message. Politicians in D.C. just don't get it. They fuel inflation with out-of-control spending. They spend, we pay, the Washington way. Joe Biden makes it worse, making things harder for Michigan families. Enough. Alyssa Slotkin votes with Biden 100%. I'll do what's right for our community. She voted for trillions in new spending that's fueling inflation. I'll stop the out of control spending. Slot can raise your taxes. I think you should keep more of what you've earned. I'm Tom Barrett and I approve this message. You see these cars? There were people in them when they were hit. That's why we make reckless drivers and the insurance companies that defend them pay. Don't let the insurance company treat you like junk. Get the Bernstein Advantage. 1 800 Call Sam. Today, mourners left flowers at a site where hundreds of victims were killed in a stampede in Seoul, South Korea. It happened near a narrow alley where around 100,000 people gathered the night before for Halloween celebrations. Here's CBS's Elizabeth Palmer with an update. It started out a celebration. Thousands of mostly young people finally freed from COVID restrictions crowded into a narrow street in downtown Seoul. Oh my God. But suddenly the crowd surged and what had been a Halloween party turned into a horror show. By the time rescue workers arrived 10 minutes after the first SOS call, they had trouble pulling people from what had in seconds become a lethal crush. Korean television broadcast pictures of medics at the scene doing CPR in the road. But the scale of the tragedy became clear when body after body after body was wheeled from the scene to waiting ambulances. This morning, South Korea's President Yoon suk yeol visited the scene of the tragedy, a sloping alley where the crush had begun. And later, at a press conference, he announced a week of national mourning and an investigation into the calamity. 
But it will be too late for the families who gathered at a community center for information and then got the news. <laughs> no parent should ever have to hear. South Korea is in shock. This is the worst national tragedy since 2014 when a ferry overturned, and in that case, too, most of the victims were young people. Elizabeth Palmer, CBS News, Tokyo. We're learning more about the attack on House Speaker Pelosi's husband, Paul Pelosi. In addition to the hammer used in the attack, the man accused also had zip ties when he broke into the couple's home, and now investigators are calling it the latest parallel to the January 6th Capitol riot. The 82-year-old was attacked in his San Francisco home with a hammer on Friday. The suspect, 42-year-old David DePapi, confronted Pelosi and demanded that, to know where Nancy was. According to the AP, investigators say the January 6th riot was apparent in this incident when rioters swarmed the Capitol carrying zip ties while saying, where's Nancy? Paul Pelosi was hospitalized for a skull fracture and suffered other injuries to his arms and hands. Charges will be filed against DePapi tomorrow. In lighter news, two Michigan lottery players can now call themselves millionaires after winning $1 million playing the Powerball Saturday night. One of the players bought their winning ticket in New Buffalo and the other in Redford. The two matched the five white balls drawn last night. Those numbers were 19, 31, 40, 46, and 57. No one matched all six numbers to win the Powerball jackpot. The new drawing is now an estimated $1 billion. The next Powerball pick is tomorrow night. Coming up on 6 News, we'll have a final look at your forecast. But first, here's a look at your winning lottery numbers. Get a load of Alyssa Slotkin. Any perception of impropriety is bad. Really? Slotkin lives in the home of a lobbyist and advocated for a program he benefited from. And Slotkin hid that her husband worked for a defense contractor, raking in millions of taxpayer dollars while Slotkin oversaw funding to her husband's company. I don't want the, 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 the whip of impropriety. With Alyssa Slotkin reeks of impropriety. The NRCC is responsible for the content of this advertising. I use my brain power to help kids realize theirs. I am Henry. When Tyler got his new heart, ours became whole again. We are Henry. I'm a bike rider and a rare cancer survivor. I am Henry. I'm a patient from point A to point B. I am Henry. I am Henry. I am Henry. When you found your inner believer and all-around conqueror, you found your Henry. Restructured pork patty sandwich. Arby's real country style rib sandwich. Old? New? Oh, man. Oh, man! Arby's, we have the meat. Tom Barrett is dangerously obsessed with abortion. Barrett distributed flyers calling himself 100% pro-life, no exceptions. He'd even consider banning abortion nationwide, including in cases of rape and incest. If Barrett had his way, doctors and nurses would face jail time. And to anyone who questions his extreme positions, Barrett said, I know I'm right. No, Tom, you're just plain wrong for Michigan. House Majority Pack is responsible for the content of this advertising. Everything is going up. The cost of gas, child care, even a box of cereal costs four bucks. Look, I can't solve the inflation problem, but we're doing things right now to help. Expanded health coverage for a million Michiganders. We lowered child care costs for over 100,000 children. We opened community college and apprentice training for 170,000 Michiganders, tuition free. You work hard to keep up. I'm working to make it a little easier. WMNS is here to honor those who served with a special presentation, Veterans Voices. Hear tales of days past and see the impact veterans are having in our communities. Watch Veterans Voices, Wednesday, November 9th at 7 on WLNS.
Overnight lows will be dropping down to 49 degrees for us here in mid-Michigan as those scattered showers eventually move into the picture and still last as we move throughout the day tomorrow as well. With that in mind, they're still going to be in the forecast for any trick-or-treat activity, so be sure to download our Storm Tracker 6 app to keep you updated on that as well. Now, your six-day forecast shows that high temperatures by tomorrow dip down into the low 60s, only fairly briefly though, right back up into the mid to upper 60s with a lot of sunshine by Tuesday, and then by Friday, cloud cover returns then maybe a couple of scattered showers Saturday morning at least. Uh -huh. I like those reaching 70. That's what I like. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kendall. All right, it's time for Sports Overtime. And Nick, we've got more reactions about the fight last night at the rivalry game. Yes, Shamir. Head coach Mel Tucker and MSU Athletic Director Alan Haller released statements on working with police in the investigation. Plus, we're going to hear from Michigan Wolverines on how they plan to take action on the incident. Plus, the top ranked... Furniture Galleries, you'll find countless chairs, including our legendary Lazy Boy recliner, in styles to meet your every need. And yes, that includes naps. Announcing the Super Sale at Lazy Boy. Get 40% off store-wide, plus an extra 10% off sale prices. Plus, we'll cover the sales tax on your entire furniture purchase. And rest well, knowing everyone's happy. Lazy Boy Furniture Galleries, live life comfortably. There are many ways to search for businesses online, but when you're looking for time-tested, recommended, and well-reviewed businesses in the MidMichigan area, start at MidMichigan'sBest.com. There you'll find all the information you need to learn more about each member and how to get in touch with them. No matter what you're looking for, click on MidMichigan'sBest.com to start your search for the best local businesses. If your old furnace is headed for a breakdown, don't wait until you're without heat. Think ahead and call Vredevog. Right now, get $1,000 off, plus 0% financing for a year when you buy a new furnace and AC together. Professional installation included. That's $1,000 off, plus 0% financing for an entire year. Our heating experts are here for you and ready to service or replace your furnace 24-7. Vredevog, we're here when you need us most. Hard work, experience, drive. It all adds up to a great team win. It also adds up to a great window team, wall side. Now buy one custom-made energy-saving wall side window, get one free. Plus five years no interest or an extra 10% off for cash for a limited time. Now more than ever, you need a reliable source for quality work. That's the wall side team. Get them over to your home. Go to wallside.com. This is Sports Overtime. Welcome into another episode of Sports Overtime. Thank you as always for joining us. We have had 24 hours to digest what happened at Michigan Stadium last night. The Michigan Wolverines were able to beat Michigan State 29-7, beating the Spartans for the first time since 2019. Our six sports director, Audrey Dahlgren and Ian Kress, were there and have more on what led to Paul Bunyan wearing the Wolverines helmet at the end of the night. Coming into the 115th edition of this rivalry, tradition tells us that whoever wins the ground game is the team who wins the game. And that was certainly the case in this meeting. Michigan outrushed Michigan State 276 to 37. A lot of those yards went to junior running back Blake Corman, who rushed the ball 33 times and ended up with 177 yards on the ground. And for Corum, he hasn't beat the Spartans in his career. So getting this win felt a little special for him, especially after something the whole team has been hearing all summer long. I thought Tuck was coming. I thought Tuck was coming. That's what they said this all season, right? All them shirts. Tuck was coming. I just saw him running. He's rushed for over 100 yards in every Big Ten game. The yards after contact are, uh, are so impressive. Uh, you know, as good as any back I've ever seen. Uh, and picking the right holes and the, the great vision and the great balance. Um, you know, he's just having a 
having a great year. Quarterback JJ McCarthy did say after the game, despite this being just a 22 point victory for Michigan, this one should have been a blowout. The Wolverines did struggle in the red zone as Jake Moody had five field goals, but nonetheless, they'll take this victory. As for Michigan State, quarterback Peyton Thorne was very blunt in the Spartans' assessment coming out of the second half. They went three and out on their first three drives, and here's what he had to say about it. Yeah, it's frustrating. It's very frustrating. Like I said, you know, we come out in the second half and and we just we we killed ourselves. Back-to-back uh, -back drives, really the third drive as well, and then um, you know I don't even know what what happened after that. Obviously, you get the ball down close, um, and then we move back. I don't I don't even know what happened there, and then uh, the interception of the red zone. You, know, you can't have it. We need to play a full 60, and we didn't do it. And obviously, we're very disappointed. I'm very disappointed, and, and so are the players. You know, but we're gonna come back tomorrow and get back to work, get ready for Illinois. Well, Michigan is certainly happy it gets to take home Paul Bunyan this year. There is a dark cloud hanging over this win because in the tunnel, there was an incident involving multiple Spartans. In the words of Jim Harbaugh, he believes that two of his guys were assaulted in the tunnel. Mel Tucker was also asked about this incident as well. He said he didn't know what happened. Things were heated, though, and they're obviously, of course, going to look into the situation. In Ann Arbor, I'm Audrey Dahlgren. And I'm Ian Kress, Six Sports. Well, thank you guys. The video of that incident went viral last night, which appears to show Michigan's J.D. McBrooms in a fight, McBurrows rather, in a fight with a group of Michigan State Spartans. After the incident, both groups were ushered into their respective locker rooms, and then moments ago, Mel Tucker released a statement on his Twitter page saying that the Michigan State football team is suspending Tank Brown, Kerry Crump, Angelo Gross, and Zion Young effective immediately. The statement goes on to say the MSU football team is working with law enforcement and leadership from both schools, along with the Big Ten Conference, to further evaluate the events in Ann Arbor. The initial student-athlete suspensions will remain in place until the investigations are completed. Michigan State Athletic Director Alan Haller released a statement last night saying, I have been in contact with the Big Ten Conference Commissioner Kevin Warren and will cooperate with the conference office in other efforts to gather more information. Michigan head coach Jim Harbaugh was asked about the incident last night and he was joined by Michigan Athletic Director Ward Manuel to give an official statement. I'll, I'll let Ward address that. Um, I haven't come up. My perspective is I heard from the two players when we got into the locker room and we started addressing it. Um, and then, uh, then the video surfaced. Uh, what happened after the game uh, is completely unacceptable. Uh, I've talked to the commissioner. Uh, he is looking into it. Uh, we have the police are also looking into it and it's because they've seen the video. Uh, and so they're addressing it. We uh, will leave it in their hands, uh, but this is not how we should interact after a game. This is not the way another team should grab a player and do what they did. It's completely and utterly unacceptable. We will let the Big Ten and law enforcement handle it, but this, this is not what a rivalry should be about. And it's not how it should be remembered. We won on the field. This man and his team and those players went out there and won. And for that to happen is unacceptable. And that's all I'm going to say. And I'll leave it to Kevin uh, and uh, law enforcement to handle from here on out. Thank you. Now, both the Michigan and Michigan State Police Departments have lost, launched a co-investigation into the situation and we'll make sure to update you on any more information on any other disciplinary actions moving forward. Well, it's time for us to take a timeout, but when we come back, it's time for some Big Ten Tournament Soccer. The Michigan State women's soccer team started its run in the tourney today. We're going to take you there when we come back. Catch all the high school sports action with the Team Trailways 5th quarter 30th anniversary, Friday nights at 11.15 on WLMS. At the Greater Lansing Convention and Visitors Bureau, we take pride in promoting sensory-friendly programming offered at our local attractions for those on the autism spectrum. Impression 5 Science Center offers sensory-friendly hours the last Saturday of the month from 9.30 through 11.30 a.m. Thank you, Impression 5, for offering this program for those with autism. For information about how you can find out about upcoming sensory-friendly programs, visit Lansing.org.
Celebrate fall with From Euland Furniture Zero Sale. Start with 40% off regular prices, store-wide, at zero down. 0% interest for up to 48 months, plus zero sales tax because we pay it for you. See, nothing beats zero at From Euland Furniture. Or save even more with value right specials, like this reclining sofa or reclining love seat with console, your choice, just $9.99. Zero down, zero interest, zero sales tax, but only for a limited time at Vermeulen Furniture Jackson. At Alpha and Omega Chimney, our crews are trained in our state-of-the-art facility. We service all chimneys, gas and wood, with repair, restoration, and cleaning, both commercial and residential. Call Alpha and Omega Chimney, 655-8515. Get more at alphaandomegachimney.com. Sunday and St. John's brand new Buicks and GMC's new car selection, rebates, discounts. Order your new vehicle from us today. 1,200 used cars and trucks to choose from. Tons of savings at Sundance. We're waking up to a Monday and, oh, by the way, Halloween. And we will be here for you with all the events planned, plus get you prepared for the scariest night of the year. It all starts bright and early. I'm meteorologist Blake Arms, and we are tracking the potential for some rain showers Sunday night into our Halloween Monday. I'll show you when that rain moves out and what kind of forecast we can look forward to for the rest of the week coming up on 6 News This Morning. We'll see you then. 6 News This Morning, here for you. WLMS is here to honor those who served with a special presentation, Veterans Voices. From first-hand accounts of days past to modern stories of success, see the impact veterans are having in our community and across the country. Watch Veterans Voices, Wednesday, November 9th at 7 on WLMS. Keep up with the latest mid-Michigan news straight to your inbox with email newsletters from 6 News. Go to WLNS.com slash newsletter. Welcome back, everyone. The Michigan State men's soccer team was all tied up at one in halftime against Northwestern on senior day when Ethan Dudley set home a penalty kick in the 80th minute to beat the Spartans 2-1. to one. And after that game, the Michigan State women's soccer team started its run in the Big Ten tournament today. The newly minted Big Ten champions looking to start the tourney in style. Out to DeMartin Stadium we go. The Spartans are the top seed of the tournament, taking on the ace seeded Minnesota Gophers. And the Gophers came out firing on all cylinders. Not even five minutes into the match, Sophia Bowman sends a pass to McKenna Beisman. She gets past the defender and sends that one right past the diving Lauren Kozel. The Gophers go up 1 0 and will hold on to the lead going into the intermission oh, with the Spartan season on the line. Ruby Diodati sends a corner sailing into the box for Savannah Lobovich. She heads into Jordan Wickes, who knocks in the equal. But the sophomore isn't done there. In the 66 minute, Celia Gaynor feeds that one to Wickes, and she'll get through traffic and sends a ball screaming into the net. Wickes collects her first multi goal game of her collegiate career as the Spartans come from behind to beat Minnesota 2 to 1, advancing to the Big Ten semifinal for the fifth time in program history. And we asked Wickes how important it is to have a tough mindset this time of year. To be able to know we can call back and make that difference, not kind of let it um, snowball into something. I think it's a big, big win for the team, and it makes the biggest difference knowing that we're able to kind of do that. It's, it's a big confidence booster knowing that no matter where we find ourselves, that we're able to kind of pull out the result at the end. Well, with all the madness on the pitch going on over at DeMartin Stadium, basketball returned over at the Breslin Center this afternoon. Susie Merchant began her 16th career at Michigan State with an exhibition game against her former school, Saginaw Valley State. It was Spartan Spooktacular with all the little ones all dressed up for Halloween in their costumes, and a familiar face was playing for the Cardinals. Portland St. Patrick grad Lydia Meredith is a freshman at SVSU. She didn't score in this one, but Clemson Traver transfer Gabby Elliott did for MSU. The steal and the score was part of her team high 14 points. And she wasn't the only transfer with 14 on the score sheet. Kamara McDaniel did some help would get the MSU in the lead by nine in the third quarter. The Spartans would roll from there thanks to freshman Theron Halleck. The grad the Grand Rapids native scored 13 off the bench, helping the Spartans win 90 to 58. MSU women will officially begin the season on November 7th against Delaware State. That's all the time we have for tonight's show. From all of us here at WLNS, we thank you for watching and hope you have a great week. Good night.